Hey traders, today I have a very interesting presentation to share with you that I think is gonna be very, very helpful if you trade ICT, if you trade or if you've been exposed to the DRIDR concept that uh, a gentleman by the name of The Master released to the training community on YouTube and Twitter. And I've seen a lot of people play around with this and I have done quite a bit of testing and looking through my own trades recently and think I have some useful tips to share um, that can really help. And you can see I've titled this Advanced Entry Techniques with Examples, so stay tuned. I think there's gonna be a lot of good stuff ahead. First, a quick disclaimer. This is not financial advice. Everything discussed in this presentation is for educational purposes only. Now with that out of the way, let's get into it. So step one, what is DRIDR? And if you haven't seen the video, I will leave a link in the description below. There's about, I don't know, three or four videos released by uh, this guy called The Master. And at first I thought it was a pretty clickbaity video. I was suspicious of it, but then I, I gave it a chance. I watched it and I kind of put it to the test, looked into it deeper, saw that there was something there and actually see how it can be integrated into uh, the way I already trade in a lot of ways. Um, so I think it'll be helpful. So what is it? Well, quick recap. It's probably not that interesting to read it. Uh, so I'm going to show it to you on a chart. There's a number of indicators available that will plot this automatically. So you don't have to do it, although it might be good in the beginning to do manually, but it basically looks something like this. I encourage you to watch the original video if you haven't already, but uh, as he goes into depth on it, but essentially it's this, this is our DRIDR range. You can see it's between this window of time, New York time, and we have our low, we have our high, highest high, lowest low, that's our DR, and the IDR is the lowest close to the highest close. We can extend these lines out for the remainder of the session, and you know, you might be wondering, if you don't already know, why do we do this? Why do we care? What's so special about it? Well, here is what is special about it. When price closes above the DR high, there's an 80 to 90% probability that the DR low will not be hit that day. And what does that look like? And first, when I say 80 to 90% probability, it's actually closer to 90%. It's more like 86, 87, 88. It depends on kind of the sample size you use, how many years back you go, um, how, what, whether you're looking at NASDAQ or S&P or the Dow, you'll get some slight variations. Um, so, you know, I'm just using it conservatively to say 80 to 90% probability, but the data I've seen suggests that it's closer to 85% to 90. Um, and also can work, I think, on, on Forex. I'm not 100% sure if the, if the data is maybe a little bit lower, but I know for, for index futures, we're talking 80 to 90%, and we're talking over, I think, a 10 to 20-year period that this has been true, at least, possibly even longer. So just want to get that out of the way. But as you can see, price closes above the DR high. That's our clue that we are not going to violate the DR low for the rest of the day. As you can see, this low did not get, this price level of this low did not get violated uh, the remainder of the day, which is kind of interesting because you see this big down candle here, this big down day. It looks like it's gonna be really, really bearish, but look, price closes above the DR high and we actually never revisit the lows. And likewise, as you can imagine, when price closes below the DR low, there's an 80 to 90% probability that the DR high will not be hit that day. And just again, you can see we close below. That confirms that this high is not likely 80% to 90% probability that this high will not get violated the remainder of the day. Now, 80 to 90% does not mean 100%. So there will be times where this will happen and price will go all the way back up. Just want you to be aware of that. And again, if this is all review for you, you know all this, um, you can just skip ahead to uh, a little bit later in the video where I get into the ICT concept section. But I'm not, I'm not too much longer on this. So 
One thing that the master talks about in his videos is that we can use candle closes above or below the IDR level to get an early indication for bias. So this is directly from his video, credit to him. And essentially what he's saying is that we have this range of price, this price range between the IDR and the DR. So if we close above the IDR in this range, we might be able to use that as an early indication that we should have a long bias uh, and that this low is not going to get touched the rest of the day and vice versa for longs. If we close in this range, maybe we get a few closes in this range, that could be an early indication that this high is not gonna get touched the rest of the day. Moving on, this is a example in his video. Price closes here and he suggests that we use other concepts that we know. He also references ICT that we can buy down here if we're buy bullish and and you know if we want to wait for more confirmation we can wait for another gap and buy here um but you know the key thing is you know what i want to point out is he gave some great tips for how to use this to find entries but he did say over and over that the dr idr is not necessarily a trade model or a trade plan on its own it's a tool it's a it's a confluence it's you know there you have to provide some framework to it um or other other things to kind of i think find some consistency in, in what you want to be doing so it's an odds enhancer is what it is but it's important to remember that just because price broke a dr high does not mean that price will continue rallying the rest of the day. Just because it breaks the high doesn't mean that you're not gonna get a deep pullback. So, you know, you don't wanna just buy a breakout of a range and hope that it's gonna keep going. That's not what he suggests either, but I'm just reiterating that price isn't just gonna keep rallying. You know, sometimes it will. Sometimes you'll get a day like this, where price breaks the DR high and just continues trending but sometimes price will retrace deep into the range and then bounce. Here you can see that we close above here, we get confirmation that this low is gonna hold and price comes all the way back to the very bottom of the range and hits the IDR, doesn't hit the DR low, although he did say you could see maybe a wick through it, but clearly it comes all the way back down and here would have been the optimal trade or optimal place to buy around here for, but you're still using the bias knowing that this low is likely not gonna be touched the rest of the day. But it's hard to know sometimes what type of day you're gonna get. And sometimes price will reverse completely. And we have here a confirmed bearish bias per the rules. We break this low, close below, high probability that this high is in, but what do you do with this information on a day like today? There's really no great short trade. I mean, you do have some, you do have some kind of sell off here, a small sell off here. You have, you know, some little, little uh, moves there. But you know, unless you're kind of a scalper, or, you know, you know, maybe you're okay with that. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with taking those types of trades. But clearly, the more I guess you could say optimal trade, based on the DR, would be if you could have justified taking a buy back into the range. Now, I just want to point out that we do know that there's an 80 to 90% likelihood that this high will not be violated. But does that mean you can't be buying? Well, obviously the odds are against you in some respects, but the odds say that it's 80 to 90% that this won't get hit. So if you have enough range, you might be able to take a trade something like this back to maybe let's say the midpoint of the range or some uh, you know, order block or some reference point here that you can aim for uh, to justify taking a trade like this. But how do we know what's likely to happen? And also sometimes there are great trades before the DR IDR even breaks. So here we have the DR range and we don't get a close above the DR or above the IDR high. And in fact, the bias confirms down here, but you know, there, 
unless you get in on, you know, unless you take this slight break and you want to somehow sell this this pullback here, you know, you might be able to find a short down here. But what can we, what clues are there that we might be able to take a trade using the idea of the DR, but how could we get involved in a move like this before it confirms? How can we anticipate that it's gonna confirm one way or another? I'm gonna show you in just a few minutes. So how do we navigate the variety of scenarios in order to frame high probability trades? And there are other scenarios than the ones I just mentioned, but I'm just gonna go over a couple right now. And the way we do it is we need to integrate the logic of ICT concepts. Now, ICT has been a mentor of mine for years, for about three or four years now. I love, uh, basically has a huge library of material on YouTube now, including the his original mentorship, as well as the 2022 YouTube mentorship. If you haven't seen it, I suggest you watch it. Most of you probably will be familiar because I know how popular it is right now. And so what we wanna do is use the tools that ICT has taught and adapt by using the tools, we can adapt to whatever price action appears on a particular day. And therefore we can build a mechanical trading approach. So let's get into some of the scenarios. I have four here, but there's more than four. Um, here are four that just stand out to me from my past trades and things that I've journaled in the past. And so I wanna share these four with you. So scenario one is the clean break and retest with PD arrays at the DR high and low. Here's what it looks like in kind of a sketch. We have our DR range. Maybe we've come from a bullish move previously. We see some kind of resistance here that then we see a breakout with a strong clean break and a retracement. This just looks like maybe it's an optimal trade entry, uh, but you know, whatever it is, we want to see a higher time frame PD array in alignment with the DR high. Again, we're aligning time and price here. So let's see what that looks like with some examples. I have a bunch of examples to share. Starting with ES on the five minute chart. We first get a slight break above the high. Now this is not what I would call a clean break. Price barely closes above it. We have this wick. So I would not use this as my trigger or whatever you want to call it to say that, hey, this is a clean break. Something like this is a little bit different. A clean move, multiple candles, multiple closes. I wanna draw your attention to this 15 minute fair value gap. This is what it looks like on the 15 minute chart. We have our DR high, our IDR high, and just beneath it, we have this 15 minute fair value gap. And what these levels are, are standard deviation. So this is an indicator that automatically plots this. This is two, but I think it should be one, a one to one of this range. So if you were to just take this range from low to high and project it on top of this high, this would be what the two represents. So doubling this range basically. So let's just say in this example, we're gonna take entry here on a limit order. Our stop's gonna go below this uh, order block and we're gonna target this standard deviation extension. If I keep us on the 15 minute, you can see that we get our entry, we get a nice wick, and price rallies not only to our target, but it goes to the buy side liquidity target uh, on the left here. So clearly we could see that playing out and we can see it on the five minute chart as well. We can see that this is also an optimal trade entry, pulling back into a discount, and we also have more and balance to fill in the left and these targets here. So, but the key thing I wanna focus on in this presentation are the clean break and retest with a PD array at the level. At the next example, we have the Dow on the five minute chart. Once again, we have our break and retest and our PD array. We have our 15 minute, not only, I just wanna draw your attention, not only do we have a 15 minute fair value gap, but ICT students will know that this whole up move right here that takes the buy side liquidity is a higher time frame breaker. This move that takes stops and then goes below it confirms this as a breaker. And we have, as I will show you in just a minute, a 15 minute fair value gap. So knowing this, we've confirmed that this high is likely in, 
But are we going to expect price to come all the way back and give a deep retracement? Are we going to have a limit order up here? No, we're never going to get filled because we know that we have this breaker. We have this 15 minute fair value gap. We should not expect price to come all the way back up here. We should be looking at the lower end of the range because we've gotten a clean breakout and we have a PD array on the level. If we look at the 15 minute, just so you can see what this fair value gap looks like, gapping through the DR low. And if you take a limit at the DR low, or you could go a little bit lower, notice also that price takes out a short term high as well into here. So you could limit order here, your stop could go above this up close candle. You could wait for it to hit it and then move away and then enter. And then here on this particular day, price was probably reaching for some higher time frame objective down here. I'm not saying it's always going to be like this, as you'll see there are many other examples where it does not trend like this. But on this particular day, there was a lot of opportunity to maybe, you know, you partial, maybe you take something off at each extension and then trail your stop. There's a lot of ways that you can go about it. Next example, we have our DR high, we break out, we leave a 15 minute fair value gap right at the DR high. What I wanna show you about this one is yes, you can leave a limit at the fair value gap at the DR high. We have the criteria met, um, but if you're still for whatever reason unsure or you're late or you wanna see more confirmation, here we create a new imbalance off of this 15 minute imbalance. So your, then your entry could be here and then your stop could be here. And then you can target, again, these standard deviations or maybe you just go for 2R every time, um, whatever fits your plan. Next example, clearly we have a clean break here. I don't think there's any denying that this is a clean break out of the DR high. And not only is there a clean break, that's step one. Step two is we need it to be in alignment with a higher time frame PD array. In this case, you can see I've marked out a 30 minute order block. The 30 minute order block looks like this. This down move, this impulse through, we have a gap, we have our order block, we have our DR high, now we just have to wait. Price comes down. Now, what do we do? As I said before, we can leave a limit at the DR, at the order block, you know, but you don't know if it's gonna wick down deeper or not. So where are you gonna put your stop? Well, you could put it below this gap. You could put it down here. You could wait for price to prove itself for this level to prove that it's gonna be supporting price. We get the wick, maybe it's not enough for you. You get a second bullish close here. So maybe you buy here, maybe you buy on the break of this candle, maybe you buy on the break of this candle, and maybe we're targeting this extension again. Maybe when you buy here, your stop doesn't have to be this low. Maybe you just give it uh, you know, 20 points or 15 points, whatever it is, whatever you trade, you have to kind of test it out. But as you can see, in this case, we get a nice tradable bounce up to this extension. Look how price respects this standard deviation and this up close candle. Or you could leave a piece on for the rest of the day and wait until the market's about to close before you close out of your trade. Last example of the clean break and retest. Similar to the other ones, we have a clean break above the DR high. We have our 30 minute order block. In this case, the midpoint of the order block is basically right where the DR high is. So, Here's the, our 30 minute order block. Clearly we've had some spike, maybe on the left, we've taken out some sell side liquidity. Of course, there's other concepts you can bring into this. For the sake of this presentation, we have our clean break, we have our higher time frame PD array, price retraces into it. Look, we get one rejection, you could have bought there if you didn't wanna buy the midpoint, if you didn't wanna buy the DR high. You could wait for the second rejection, you buy here, stop goes below the order block or below here, depending on your risk tolerance, and we aim for new highs in this extension again, or at least here, maybe you take a partial here. What happens? Well, price does not make it to our target, and I just wanted to show that it's not perfect every time. It doesn't go straight to 3R every time. There's some calibration you have to apply to this, but we get a tradable bounce. I think this is probably 2R up till 
maybe these bodies or something like that, or I have to see, but depending on where you do put your stop, if you're going to go for a more conservative stop, you're, you're not going to get the highest risk to reward with such a wider stop. Uh, maybe you move to break even and you don't care if you get taken out at break even. Maybe once you hit this uh, standard deviation, you move to break even, or once you clear this high, you move below this gap, which would be break even. Maybe once we clear this high, you move below here. So there's a lot of ways to manage. There's a lot of ways to trade using this approach. But the logic remains the same with the clean break and retest. There needs to be a clean break and there needs to be a PD ray aligned with the DR high or low. So that is scenario number one. Let's look at scenario number two, which is the rejection at discount and premium with external liquidity PD arrays. That is a mouthful. That sounds ridiculous. That sounds like nonsense, but it's actually not that complicated if you're familiar with ICT. Here is a breakdown, a rudimentary sketch, and then I'll get into some examples. We have our DR range and we have a PD array just above on a higher time frame. Now we haven't necessarily confirmed a bias yet. We don't know this isn't clear if this is a close above or if it just wicks above. You can see that it's probably gonna be a wick for the sake of this example. But what I wanna point out is for this scenario, we can use the DR as a discount and premium dealing range and can take trades before a bias has been confirmed. So why would we want to do this? Well, you will see why in just a little bit. But first, let's look at this example. Price tries to close above. If it closed above, we would have had a bias that this low would not be violated. But what happens? Price tried to close and it got rejected. Couldn't even close above the, the IDR. It didn't give us an early indication either. Nice long wick. Now, are we going to short just because we have a rejection candle like this at the IDR high? I wouldn't. But if we know we have a hourly order block just above the extreme of this range, doesn't it look a little bit better? If we look here, we have this up close candle. We're seeing some bearish order flow. And this is before the IDR high is hit. And if we go back to the five minute chart, knowing that we have this narrative in mind, we let's say we set a sell limit or we mark it on the break of this low and we target the bottom end of the range. And we are anticipating based on the higher time frame narrative, based on this rejection, we are anticipating that we are going to hit the bottom end of this range. That doesn't mean it always will, but on the break of this low, we can sell. We can put our stop above this candle. If you want to get that great risk to reward trade, you can put the stop a little bit higher, give it some breathing room, maybe above the 50% of the order block, maybe above the high of the order block, depending on what you feel makes the most sense. Maybe you start it up high, and then once price drops, you reduce your risk. So you've already taken some risk off the table once it starts to move in your direction. And what do we get in this case? picture perfect example where it sells off and never returns. Now, why would we want to know about this? Why would we want to do this? Why is this a useful scenario to have in our back pocket? Well, if price doesn't close above and we don't get a bullish bias, we have to wait a while for price to confirm. I think it probably confirms here or here. I think it confirms here that the high is probably in and not going to get violated. So what's the trade you're going to, are you going to, short here. I guess there's an imbalance here. You know, maybe, you know, I don't know if it's like lunchtime here. Maybe you get another short, but you know, you're not always going to get a big sell off. So to me, the optimal kind of trade of the day would have been this move. And this is a way to frame it based on the DR and IDR concept blended with what ICT teaches. And it's just another way of using time and price together. Another example looks very similar to the last one. And that's just to show you that these things repeat. Yes, these are kind of cherry picked examples, but you know, it didn't take me that long to find these examples. It took me longer just to you know, do all the screenshots and organize it into a presentation. But here we have the range complete. After 1030, we get a wick into this order block, which I'll show you in a second. Nice candlestick rejection. Here's the, what it looks like on the hourly, tapped up in, clearly it's gonna sell off. And what do we do? Again, we short 
below the break of this low, or maybe we just at the candle close, we short. Not only does price sell off and hit the target of the DR low, but then price comes all the way back and hits it again. This could have been another sell where maybe you see this wick and that's enough for you to take another position and it goes to the IDR low this time. So, you know, that's not always gonna happen, but just to show you that this kind of thing does happen sometimes and that, you know, if you're holding this trade for a huge move, you might get surprised that price retraces all the way back to your entry. So take some profits, take partials, have a system where you know where you're gonna exit. Next chart, NASDAQ five minute. We have our range, we have a 15 minute order block, clearly we have a big impulse. Now one solid candle like this may or may not be bullish, depends on the framework, but for this example, we have a 15 minute order block below this range. We have not confirmed either side yet. If we go to the 15 minute, you can see what the order block looks like on the 15 minute. And depending on how confident you are, you can say, hey, you know, I recognize that we haven't broken either side of the DR. I see that we have this scenario day possibly taking place. We have a PD array below the range. I'm gonna set a limit right at the order block, stop below, maybe you do that. Maybe you split your entries, you take a you split half of your size here, you wait for it to close back in, you add the other 50%, or maybe you do this, you wait for it to tap and reject, and then at the close you buy, you put your stop here or here or here, but depending on what you do, it's going to affect your risk to reward. We aim for the high, and this example is just to show you that it's not always gonna make it there. But can you see the value in this type of a model where you can still buy here with a decent probability that this low is gonna hold for a period of time? And to this high, it's about 2R, I'm pretty confident. And if you are one that is more aggressive and you put your stop below the wick, then it's this is a great trade to take some or all of your position, or you know, you gotta take a partial or not, or you at least move to break even because eventually this happens. And then once this happens, we, you know, now again, this doesn't confirm, we don't get a confirmation on what type of day we're gonna get until here. So, you know, and then here it looks like it's just gonna keep selling off. I don't know if there is a short to be had by this point, but you were able to buy using this framework. Let's go into the final example. I want to show you this one because, yes, we get an early indication here. Price closes above the IDR high. Oh, no, this is the close. So we do get technically a close, an early indication that price is closing. This may be to some a bullish signal that this low is in. But if you are paying attention, you will notice that there is an H4, four hour order block, bearish order block, just above this high. And then when we get this rejection, I don't know about you, but I would not be wanting to be buying this market. I would not wanna buy, let's say this down close candle, I wouldn't wanna buy down here because I would, not, I would need to see more that this is moving up before wanting to be involved in any longs. If I go and show you the four hour chart, it's gonna give away what happened, but clearly you can see we have bearish order flow, a lot of momentum to the downside, and this is where price tapped into it for the second time. Going back to the five minute to see how it played out. If we got in on the break here, or maybe on the IDR high, we can see maybe in this case, because the order block is small, you could feel fine putting your stop above. If you didn't wanna do the wick, you target the low, maybe you target an extension and wait for it to hit, it never does, but maybe you come up with a rule where you know, you notice, hey, price breaks the low and then reclaims it once, it reclaims it twice, breaks it again and reclaims it a third time. Maybe you say, hey, after the third time or at the second time of it breaking back into the range, I don't think it wants to go down anymore. I'm gonna close the rest of the trade. Maybe you, instead of just say trailing your stop here, and then price comes and takes you off and you could have grabbed more profit. You also have kind of a three drives pattern um, at the low here. Everyone's probably expecting this low to get taken, but it doesn't. And so again, 
you know, you want to profit and grab as much as you can. But I would say that this is an excellent trade. You know, yes, you get a confirmed break here. Yes, this high never got violated. But are you, where's the short trade once you get this confirmation? Are you going to sell here? You're going to get stopped out. Are you going to sell here? I mean, you get sort of a move, but then the session's over. So you really don't have a good opportunity. You're waiting all day for it to break the high or the low. Um, meanwhile, with this model, you can take advantage and capture a move like this. So guys, this is just the beginning. This is just two of the scenarios. Um, it took me a little bit longer than I thought to make this video. Um, these two are the first two. There's four that I've come up with so far. Not that I've come up with, but there's four that I've kind of um, been able to kind of describe in a kind of clean, organized way. And I think there's more actually. There's really like five or six that I've seen, but there's four so far that I have. And we're just gonna have to pick this up another time. First, I really wanna know if this video is helpful to you, if you find this informative, if you find this as something that could be applied to your trading. So please like, leave a comment. If it was helpful, I will make part two, I promise. Um, if I get enough kind of reaction to it, I don't, you know, if it's just like five people and maybe I'll get to it eventually, but um, I just wanna know if this is something that people are enjoying and if you, and I want you to just test it for yourself. If it's something that you see value in, um, then, you know, definitely, definitely play around with it, test it out. This is going to be different for everyone in terms of where you want to enter, where you want to put your stop loss, how risky you are, how conservative you are, where you want to take partials. If you want to hold for two R every time, if you want to trail your stop loss at a certain point. So there's some tinkering that, everyone is going to have to do based on their own personality, based on their own experience and based on their own back testing and forward testing. So this, this is a shortcut, but this is not going to, um, you know, you have to put some work in on your own, but hopefully you can see there's a lot of promise in here in what, um, not only, uh, the DR IDR concept, but also in how to blend it with ICT, give you some ideas for, uh, building a model of your own. So that's it for this presentation and we will be back again soon.